So, thank you everyone for tuning in who's coming so far. This uh, will be available for ever and a day um, here on after on the Woodstock page. So if people uh, that you know don't manage to see it live this morning, they can see it again after this. So who is Jill Robinson? That's what we want to know. So Jill Robinson, Jill Robinson is the founder and CEO of Animals Asia, an inspirational figure around the world to many people, a warrior for animals' rights through education, very important through educating people. She loves a good beer and she looks great in white jeans. That is Jill Robinson. So we're going to bring Jill on now. Jill, no, Jill, you've got to sit back down again. You can't run away. Here we go. Here we have drum roll. Jill Robinson! You too, honestly. Good evening, Hong Kong. Good morning here. Hello there. Nice to see you. You look very nervous. Don't be nervous. Carol's got an important question for you. After that introduction, are you kidding? Yeah, at the end of the introduction, you look great in white jeans. I've got an extremely important question. How do you keep them clean? They always look so white. Yeah, I'm just so jealous. I put white jeans on within minutes. Yeah, she does. This woman looks amazing in white jeans and they're always clean. That's not the question I thought you were going to ask, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping clean is the easy bit, believe me. The VPL, not so much. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. So, <laughs> oh, we didn't think that you'd expect that question. Also, no, you do I love a good you. beer. You I do. You. you do love a good beer as well. We know that as well. So, um, don't we all? Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh to carry out that's a blank card there's no questions on that we've got reams of questions <laughs> so thank you for joining us from hong kong uh to have a chat about what the bears get up to at the sanctuary and how naughty they actually are or how good they actually are so, but Carol had a really important question at midnight last night while we were still talking about what questions we were going to ask you. You inspire so many people around the world. Um, you really, really do. Us, you inspire us. What we're doing now is because of you. Yeah. Who inspires you? Yeah, thank you. That That's so easy. Thank you for that question. Um, Two, two sort of sets. So the first one, of course, is Virginia McKenna. That's that's a no-brainer. You know, I fell in love with Virginia when I was eight years old and watching um, the film Born Free. And then I finally met her, um, crikey, I don't even, like in my 30s in Hong Kong and um, fell in love with her all over again, but properly now because I, you know, became to know the woman that I'd fallen in love with, the, the actress in Born Free. Um, and um, she just became a lifelong friend and, and my mentor, I have to say as well. And it was, you know, in the late 1990s when I was thinking about setting up an organization and my then hubby then, you know, said, just call Virginia, see what she says. And I did. And I said, I'm thinking of setting up an organization to help bears. What do you think? And she said, just do it. That's all she said. Just do it. And, and that was enough to do it. <laughs> um, even now to this day, guys, you know, if ever I have a tricky question, you know, tricky, tricky thing I've got to think about, I will very often say to myself, what would Ginny do? What would she do? Or what would she say? I really do to this day, and, and she's become an enormous influence in my life. And, and I, again, to this day, as I say, and we still, you know, we haven't seen her since um, since last Christmas. And even now, you know, we're working a lot together and just checking up on each other. And yeah, I miss her. The second influence, of course, the bears. There's no question about it. I, you know, I remember Jane Goodall always saying, she learned everything about her life from her dog. And to some extent, that's true with me, with my old dog, Max, that started the Dr. Dog program. But the Bears, too, have taught me, and I know everyone in the team, an enormous amount, enormous amount about stoicism, humility, determination, 
tenacity, courage, you name it. They, they've, you know, they've taught us a lot and I, le- and I still learn a lot from them. Wow. I think Jasper's got to be one of my all-time favourite bears. And Banjo. Jasper Absolutely. and Banjo. Oh, I miss them like crazy. Absolutely. They, you know, like I grew up with them. I mean, they were just such characters. You know, I was their vet nurse in the early days. So I think there wasn't much I didn't know about them. And it's kind of different now because we have the most amazing teams in China and Vietnam um, who are doing, you know, who are getting to know their personalities like I used to with the, with the older bears because you're just working so closely with them all the time. You know, um, if, you, if you're bear managers or vet nurses or carers, you do, you know, but and so my old job is long gone, really. But I picked up a lot from Jasper and Banjo, even how to climb trees <laughs> illegally. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a video in a little bit of one of the moon bears, which I don't know if it is Jasper up the top of a tree where it shouldn't no, be. No, it wasn't. Absolutely not, Heather. Yeah, I, I read <laughs> that he was climbing trees, and I thought, where did you get that? He, Jasper was. <laughs> of a square bear his bum was far too big to climb trees that's for sure he uh, <laughs> he didn't have a chance <laughs> not ever <laughs> so next question here we go i i for, for everyone who's watching we've got two sets of questions one set of questions is about the bears and about what they get up to and the other set of questions aren't about bears at all Okay, so we'll we'll go with the bears again, Jill, just to ease you in to the interview. Trust withering by the second. (laughs) (laughs) So we saw Cotton Blossom yesterday. Yeah, amazing rescue. She's beautiful. Absolutely, isn't she? It's 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 amazing to watch. You know, because you go live and your staff are just there's. That's just so the energy, so passion, yeah. there. and it's amazing, just, it's just it? honestly, every time we say watch one, and it's just amazing yeah. to watch them bears come. Yeah, they, they cotton blossom. It was a very long journey for cotton blossom, so all the way to the sanctuary, and she made a bed for herself out of banana leaves on the way there, and then rearranged it uh, <laughs> part way there. So, do moon bears make nests? They do. They make some beautiful nests. You know, sometimes we've sort of been in the enclosure in the morning after we've called them back in into their dens and you go out there and you see these most exquisite nests in the ground that they make. You know, they fashion with tree, you know, tree branches and leaves and things. Um, or they, they'll they dig holes. They'll dig very deep holes. And, you know, um, Ozzy, Ozzy always has his own nest. If you remember Ozzy, in, in, or Delaney as his real name is, but that's that was his nickname, Ozzy, um, out in house too. And um, he'll always claim his 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 nest which was jasper's before actually as well um or indeed in trees one side um he he has he builds multiple nests in trees and destroys all the trees at the same time as well wow prolific nest builders and and very comfy ones as well wow okay um I don't know if we should ask a question from the left or the right (laughs) now We'll, we'll go we'll go with the bears again shall we so um what is the naughtiest thing a moon bear has ever done in the sanctuary the naughtiest or the most embarrassing and the most embarrassing used to be frenzy and it would always be when i would take like you know maybe 10 or 12 people in to see her because she was she was such a sweetheart you know she and she did some some really wonderful training. You know, she'd been declawed when we'd rescued her. Um, and we were, and she also had a bad heart. And our team had trained her to actually sit like a teddy bear at the, the den bars, literally on a little bottom with her feet out so that we could put a stethoscope to her chest and hear her heart, believe it or not. But invariably, when you were showing off about what you could do with Franzi, and you had a whole audience of people around you, um, she would just sit there and fart. (laughs) 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 It was just super, super embarrassing. (laughs) Oh, bless (laughs) 
opportunity to do such funny things. Like Jasper was always a photo bomber, always. You know, we'd get the media coming along and having, you know, they wanted to just get some sort of nice shots out in the enclosures and things. And whenever they came back from house two, they said, yeah, we got a good array of bears. They said, but there was always one that always get in front of the other bears and, you know, by the fence line and everything and photo bomb every shot. And I'd go, did you have yellow eyebrows? And they go, yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's Jasper. <laughs> God bless Jasper. Um, so, can being bears swim? Yes, they can, but we don't have swimming pools sort of deep enough for them to do, be doing, you know, long, long laps, um, you know, but we've certainly seen them with all four paws off, um, you know, off the ground as they're swimming. So, so okay. yes, I presume, you know, like you see, obviously out in, you know, the, the, the oh God, Alaska and things when you see bears yeah. swimming, I presume, yes, that moon bears can swim just as well as, as, as brown and black bears. Okay. We'll, we'll hold that thought. We're gonna we're gonna watch a video now of Tuffy attempting to swim, and part way <laughs> through Tuffy splashing around, something happens which makes Tuffy get back out of the pool. So let let's have a look at Tuffy. Hang on a second. <laughs> And it's you just see him go, oops, that just went wrong, didn't it? You know, you just yeah. see in his face in his face exactly what, what, what has gone wrong there. Um yeah. I don't know how many million views it it got, but it, it went absolutely, as I say, viral everywhere, bless him. It you know? was it was very funny when we watched that and that, that just whole all four paws yeah. out of the pool and that, and that was it. Gay, Tuffy gave up after that and kind of like <laughs> after that. <laughs> so how many oh that's a strange we're not going to ask that question yet we'll save that one <laughs> so do, moon bears and sun bears you've got sun bears as well we're going to show a video shortly of some sun bear cubs so do moon bears and sun bears get on they're very different looking bears um, we we don't mix them Heather, we, we don't mix them. Um, you know, I've been to a bear park in China where they've had um, sun bears and moon bears together. Um, and they sort of had like 20 moon bears in one enclosure with about two sun bears. Um, and sun bears are about half the size of moon bears, but they are, I think it's safe to say, twice as feisty as well. Um, so, you know, the, the sun bears are really? holding their own together with a bunch of moon bears as well so yeah interesting i mean i, I we, we wouldn't mix them i mean you know they they wouldn't be sort of you know socializing or integrating so much in the wild so you know we try to at least adhere to their wild instincts as much as we can yeah and and they are very very different looking back yeah. between so moon bears have got like the rains is um I, I said to you yesterday some bears almost look like a bear crossed with a sloth yeah or a because of their yeah some well bears. yeah <laughs> yeah they're very dog like very dog -like. yeah but so uh, and and they they are they're, they're sort of higher maintenance if you like as well i think our vietnam team would say that if they were asked as well you know and oh gosh they're a lot more vocal as well um, very very loud that you can you can certainly hear from one end of the sanctuary to the other when there's a little bit of a disagreement between two, two sun bears it's like you think it's you know it's the biggest sort of kickoff fight in the world and actually they're just having a minor disagreement so it's uh yeah they've got bags of character sun bears i'm glad you mentioned vocalization because we're going to go to the left hand side of the question that leads nicely on to our next question you brought this on, you mentioned vocalisation, so you're to blame. So we're going to take it in turns, the three of us, 
to do a moon bear impression. Okay. <laughs> So and and whoever gets the most hearts and likes and thumbs up and stuff like that uh, is the winner. Um, now we last night uh, it was about midnight last night. We were desperately trying to find uh, audio clips of moon bears, and we know they make all different kinds of sounds. So I'm going to go first because <laughs> you're the expert, so you should know. And then, and then Carol, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to follow too. Okay, so I can then try and mimic. What I'm going to. Well, I'm going to do two sayings that I think that they do. Okay, you ready, Jill? Go on, go for it. So, okay. Uh, Good girl. Excited or a bit amorous, and they also go. Yeah. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Copy you, but I can't do them. <laughs> but they do they make a louder noise, don't they? they make lots of different oh, noises. Yeah. Phil can give us a full on demonstration. Come on, Jill. You know, I've been practicing for oh gosh, I mean, since the early 90s, since we started. Do you know what, Heather? I'll tell you seriously, those sounds can mean anything from you know. I'm, I'm behind you, I don't mean you harm. I'm behind you, I do mean you harm. You hear them on a bear farm very often when they're really, really cautious, when people come to the cage, yeah. um, because it's really, really cautious vocalization. Yeah. So it's just back of the throat, very sort of guttural vocalization. And, and you know, I've practiced for about 30 years and I still can't do it. So no, I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> but the, <laughs> you mentioned, the huffing as well is for sure one step up from that. And that's a warning, you know, to, yeah. to be, you're in my space and you can just and they make off. like a popping sound don't they it's like a yeah. pop it if they're playing yeah. and, and stuff it's so like a they can't it that's if they, that that's again if they it, it, it's a multi-faceted vocalization it's a really funny one but it can also mean i'm in great fear as well as well really? as being there and saying hey i'm here do you fancy a game it's it's a strange strange sound yeah um, so the thing that you see as well is often accompli accompanied by massive salivating as well and their lips will purse and that's before they're getting very very angry um, and it's amazing Aussie again is a fantastic bear to see that because he sometimes when he gets a bit discombobulated you know you can see him sort of stand up on his back legs and you start seeing him purse his lips and then start dribbling and then he'll go <laughs> and, that, and it's it's a, such a oh it's such a a meaningful sound that you just back off you go right that's you know it's uh it's for sure a threat it's for sure a threatening sound and they're incredibly intelligent moon bears aren't they incredibly incredibly i mean I, yeah it's uh, they 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 you know we we must miss around but i hate the word training but you know they train us very very well you know they just <laughs> um and you know they they just get to know routines very well as well. They get very settled into their routines um, and understand them. Um, and they understand the you know the characters of other bears around them. They get to know their carers as well. They respond to some of the training sessions that we do. You know to train them to cut their nails, for example, um, or even to take blood. Amazing to see that. It took about two years um, for our team for Nick and Wendy. Um, that were working with us then to, to get Bamps trained for taking blood. But my gosh, wow. superb, superb. He couldn't get enough of the training. He was just running into his den, putting his arm through a sleeve um, and, and just saying, just give me the honey, give me the honey. And he didn't even flinch as Wendy was shaving his arm, putting alcohol on and then putting in the needle to take blood. And he was just saying, just give me more yogurt, give me more honey. Give me more honey. <laughs> really didn't flinch and she would have to try multiple times sometimes because she couldn't sort of see the the vein as you would in a surgical situa situation yeah. um and and yeah it, it could go on for about two or three minutes and he was just totally fixated on on his on his treatment his treats enrichment that's that's incredible because i guess when you're doing stuff like taking blood or doing routine small stuff like that instead of like the big health checks that you do you don't want to always be putting a bear under anaesthetic because yeah. having been on the bear bar farms for so long, a lot of them have got a lot of health issues anyway. So, um, right. to, you know, to be able to, to take blood while they're still awake and alert yeah. is, is pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah that was incredible. exactly 
he was because he had a kidney condition. So, you know, it was just something to be able to take blood on a you know routine basis um, oh. without as you said anesthetizing him all the time. So wow. Yes, like a man, you know, does that. And the cage training guys as well. You know, that's another real development of trust, I think. I mean, you imagine for a bear that's been caged for anything up to 30 years on, on mm. a farm. And then, you know, how do we get them to the hospital? You don't put a collar and lead on them. Like, you know, no. like you would a dog. Um, you've got to get them used to the, the cages again. So it's really, you know, multiple disciplines of, of positive reinforcement the whole time. And ultimately, they just... And, it, and actually, I should say as well, after they've had their health check, after they've gone into the, um, the the training cage, had their health check, gone back to their den, then you immediately start cage training again because obviously you've taken them two steps back because they've gone, yeah. uh-oh, no, 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 we remember getting a needle the last time. We're not going to have to fall for that again. So you get them back into the cage again to make it a pleasurable experience. Take them around to the hospital in a cage. Do nothing to them except give them treats and treats and treats and multiple, you know, good things happening and then just take them back again and they go oh that wasn't too bad you know put them back in their den and that's it so it's that's it's a real it's a real science that's how smart they are though yeah. because they know they know you know this is a good place this, these people care these people are looking after us so yeah it just, yeah it's pretty cool it's very yeah. cool. You see them, you know, some of our older ones now, you know, especially in China, where they're kind of becoming more and more used to the system now and they're getting trickier and trickier <laughs> to anaesthetize. So, you know, when our vet, vet nurse are going into the into the sort of recovery room to try and, um, you know, anaesthetize them, they're turning around the whole time. They're going, no, we're not going to turn away from you. We know exactly what you're going to do, you know. So there's this sort of game of, of turning around in the, in the cage and things. So they're clever, as you said. Yeah. Well, let, let's watch a short video of uh, two sun bears because they are very, very... So people who, who see the moon bears all the time and it's moon bears, sun bears are very different, very different looking. Let, let's have a look at these two having a right old play. These, these are orphan bears. <laughs> Two bears loving life. I was, I was saying to Rachel, if I, if I worked over with you guys, I'd be getting told off all the time because I'd just be staring. I'd just be watching the bears all the time. You just oh, watch them for hours. hours. That's the best thing you can do to understand them and know that every individual character that they have. That's why our team are so amazing because they do observations all the time, you know, yeah. just to pick subtle subtle differences in their behavior that might mean that something's a little bit wrong you know so yeah. it's uh, yeah i always say they have the best job in the world but and, and yeah. I, I don't adore them they are a, but in both countries they are just superb really what they don't know you know it's it's not worth knowing to be honest they, they just delve into the bear's heads and and completely you know understand understand the, the minutiae of their of their characters wonderful yeah so the so moon bears, obviously uh, a lot of people or most people know that they get used for bear barn in the bear barn trade. But how did you end up with sun bears as well then? How did you end up with rescuing sun bears? Do they get used at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they do, you know, in Vietnam. So we haven't got them in China. We had one uh, sun bear in China, um, but she died moonlight. And so the, so all of the sun bears now are in Vietnam. Um, and yes, they've either been used, you know, for the bio trade or as pets, you know, multiple reasons, really. But um, yeah. Um, and, the, and you know, I, I think, again, the intelligence of these bears that you, you just were saying, the sun bears. Um, we, Murphy, we call our Mensa bear. Oh, I do. I call him a Mensa bear. Um, it's a wonderful film. I don't know if you're showing that, but um, 
anyway, it's, it's, you can see him. He's trying to get a toy that's tied up on the platform. And you can see that he just wants to get the toy so he can play with it on the ground. And he figures out how to untie the knot. And you can see him, like when he's got the last strand of the knot, he's not even looking at it anymore, even though it's still sort of fixed on the platform because he knows the knot has been untied. So then you see him just pulling down the string. And I, I just think that whole, you know, I, I, you know, process in his head of this is a knot and this is how I untie it is it, just superb. It, it just blows me away every time you see that video. You know, it's... It's incredible, isn't it? It's incredible. See, moon bears, they form friendships with each other at the sanctuary. They do. They um, have... Sorry. No, you carry on. No, I was just going to say they form bear bundles of play. You know, it, it, often the boys, and you see them sort of rolling helter-skelter, turning somersaults out in the enclosure. It's just wonderful. And for a species that's not supposed to be social in the wild, you know, it's just wonderful to see them forming literally lifelong friendships. You know, some of them, like the girls, we've, we've had groups of girls before that get together very closely. We've called the knitting circle before. Um, <laughs> Such a, and it was like they're gossiping about all the bears around them, and they would warn all the other bears that came back to them. You know, it's like they were sort of three old grannies saying, "Bugger off!" You know, get out of my way. Just <laughs> oh, <this> me <laughs> knitting, <laughs> um, and they just make you laugh all the time because you can you can just put that your your own characteristic, if you like, um, in them, and especially like at night time as well. We've seen three bears in the same hanging basket bed, especially in the winter. Wow. You know, where they get up warm and cozy together. And again, Rupert and Frenzy, I, if you remember me talking about them years ago, you know, Frenzy used to use Rupert like a hot water bottle, you know, just in the winter. And then she'd discard him in the early sort of, um, you know, when the weather got a bit warmer. And then spring came along and she'd feel a bit flirty. So she was back with him again. And then by the summer she'd had enough and she was <laughs> she was terrible. You know, this, this closeness, it was all on her terms and nothing else. <laughs> Wow. Well, we we were very, very fortunate. Uh, so, nearly nearly two years ago, we got married, uh, and we got a phone call from Joe, uh, the UK director for Animals Asia, who said we've got amazing news for you, and you very kindly allowed us to name a Ben, who we named Woofstock, of course. Yeah. I'm going to put a picture up of Woodstock because he is just incredible. He's really beautiful. Isn't he? Really, he? Really, he's Carol, just like, he's Ninja Bear. I'm um, so, so sorry I didn't get there. You know, I wanted to get to your way. I hear it was absolutely beautiful. Joe and the team said it was the best wedding they had ever been to. I, I honestly, I, I just heard it was just exquisite so congratulations thank you, thank you. Thank we had you. about 52 dogs there as well so <laughs> it was one of those weddings um, and this is this is Woofstock um otter so Woofstock's yes. on the left and otter's lying down and they're best mates and otter has seizures so they don't stay together at night but we we are very very lucky that we have been sent some footage of Woofstock and otter playing with each other which shows what they're like so we're going to pop that up and nobody's seen this before out there in virtual lands so let's have a look at Woodstock and Otter. Woodstock starts and then Otter, Otter gets the better of Woodstock and then at the end it's actually Woodstock who is being a pro wrestler basically <laughs> with Otter so have a look at this guy. <laughs> So 
time. I love the aren't they? They're crescents. Right at the end, Woofstock literally stands up and, and just both their crescents are just like beautiful, that. absolutely stunning, orangey, golden, gorgeous crescents. Yeah, beautiful bears. We love Woofstock bears. We've got we've we've got Paul. Our house, our hallway is full <laughs> of moon bear pictures, paw prints, literally everywhere in in the hall. So when are we coming out? I know. Oh, yeah. Been trying to arrange to come out, haven't we? We will be coming oh, out. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. We've been trying to beer for you. <laughs> it'd be nice to come out and have a beer with you. Yeah. So, who who was is the longest Moon Bear resident? So we oh. had we we got your annual. 2019 review and it had lots of stuff in there about all the bears and how long that they were there for so who is the longest ever resident without a doubt tatsy hong hong who was a bear that i saw on a bear bar farm not not the original hong but a, but a, a bear on the second bile bile farm um that i saw in 1993 believe it or not. And he was with nine other bears that we rescued um, in the 90s when I was working with I4. And then um, after a few years of I4 having them, then they asked if we could have the remaining bears because their population was going down. So we took Hong back to our Chengdu centre and he's still there and living a, a wonderful, uh, such an old dodder, bless him. He must be, you know, he's in his 30s now. And, and just... Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So it's it's kind of like you rescue the bears and you could rescue the bears because Woofstock is quite young. He's, he's a young bear. Um, and then they could be 30, 40 years lifespan of a moon bear. So then you've got, you could have 20 plus years of caring for the bears at the sanctuary with if they've got the health problems, the pain for the staff. Um, and, and doing all of that. So fundraising is huge for, for you guys to be able to do that. Um, how, how has the recent pandemic kind of affected uh, your ability to fundraise? Because I guess like with us, we're not doing Woodstock this year and I guess people haven't been able to go out. So it must be a huge impact on you and moving food around, I guess, as well. Yeah. Everything changed, Heather. Everything changed, like everything changed for every single person in the world, virtually. You know, in the early days, oh. I remember in the early days, do you remember I, I was doing some videos from Chengdu um, around Chinese New Year? And we were driving around barren streets with no cars and all the shops shut up. Yeah. And everybody yeah. around the world saying, oh, my gosh, you know, take care. It must be so awful for everybody. And then, bam, weeks later, you guys are in exactly the same position. You know, yeah. everything in the world was. Um and yeah, every, you know, the food that we were getting shot through the roof or we couldn't get it. You know, cabbages even went up like four times. Um, the medication for the bears, again, we, we were struggling to really find it. And when we could find it, the prices were exorbitant. Um, I mean, just our, you know, cost cutting, obviously, as a foundation as a whole, we've had to really cut costs mm. um, over the last few months um, and have contingencies in place as well for the following few months and for next year because no one knows what's going to happen so yeah. our board really rightly wants us to see contingencies in place you know so that mm. we are prepared every step of the way so it's, mm. it's scary it's really scary you know and and so far we're, we're in what we call survival mode and we are surviving you know in our revised budget yeah we're, we're bringing in funds we always promised we always promised that the bears of course and teams would be the last to go you know and that was always our promise so you know luckily touch wood we haven't had to touch our other programs like cat and dog welfare or captive animal welfare so you know but but we've had to make cut, cuts elsewhere so you know it's it's we just have to ride this storm as everyone else is you know but i i, I do want to say heather and carol thank you thank everybody in the uk thank everyone that's watching people have really risen up and helped us so superbly well you know we've been absolutely blown away um that we we have had such loyal and and generous friends on side because never never have we needed you more so honestly from our hearts Thank you. You've kept us going. You've really kept us going. 
Well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and people can still get involved and they don't have to do crazy things like I do. We'll come on to that in a moment. You know, two weeks ago, I strapped myself to the top of the plane for oh. Animals Asia. Uh, yeah. It's so people... <laughs> I do think the challenges are becoming unbearable as a wife. I tell you, I, I get worried what's going to be next. Yeah. So. Carol. Well, I saw your page. You know, I know you've done some crazy things, Heather, but I never, I, I know you were talking about the plane thing, but I don't know why I didn't even know about it. Crikey, probably yeah, people thought. Yeah, yeah two weeks ago, I wing walked for Animals Asia over the Devon countryside. Um, so there's lots of things that people can get involved in. So the unbearable challenge every single year, unbearable challenge. You don't have to do what I do. Be extreme. Don't have to do what unbearable I do. to me was be giving up chocolate for a month. There you go. Yeah. Or, or wine. Or wine. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can do stuff like that. You don't actually have to, you know, be the export, you know, like this one. Um, so there's lots of things that the, the people out there can do. So, um, so, so unbearable challenge is a brilliant thing. It's a very simple concept of unbearable. What would you do that's unbearable? And you don't have to do it for a month. You don't have to do it for a week. You can do it for 24 hours like I've done or 20 minutes on top of a plane like I did. So um, I'm going to do a month. Something something. Yeah. Yeah. So people can go to um, www.animalsasia.org and there's loads of information about how people can get involved in fundraising um, as well as donating, but doing something a bit quirky and fundraising. Because the way I think we look at it is if we do really quirky things to fundraise for you guys, it sits in people's heads that that stupid woman heather has just strapped herself in a flight suit to the top of a plane or slept in it or slept in a cage in the woods for 24 hours or you know peed in the woods like a bear um so there's still stuff out there that people can do because obviously you just can't go to the the fates the fairs the normal way of doing the fundraising that the teams do over here um every week but they can also buy lots and lots of stuff oh, for the really bears too yeah, uh, on the website. So you can buy pools, paddling pools, and hammocks. Jars of jam. Jars of jam. Marshmallows. Yeah. Honey. Smoothies. Frozen fruit ice lolly things as well. Yeah. So what is what you always used to tell me off because yeah, we're buying some jam and stuff. I was always buying this stuff. Although it was the bears loved it, it's, it's not the healthiest thing that we would always choose to buy the bears. So what are the bears' favorite treats? Yeah, it, you're right. Anything sweet, anything. So they're just like us, you know, sugar. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Which is handy because at least it disguises, you know, horrible tasting medication. And that's really the main reason that we use the sweet treats, you know, because, you know, a large population of, of our bears are on medication, obviously, yeah. because of the treatment they suffered. So um, jam definitely does make the medicine go down for sure. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good point. And, they, and again, this is where they train us because I just have to laugh. I read all the reports that come in every week and, you know, people like Sarah in, in, in Vietnam, you know, she's saying, oh, we did, did um, you know, whatever bear on strawberry sauce and no, we've got to go up to pineapple jam now. You know, and it's just like they, they have likes and dislikes, but then they get fed up as well, you know, and you think how yummy must pineapple jam be? But then they go off it and they insist on condensed milk or something. You know, it's 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 crazy. But that's why you love them even more, because they've got they've got these girls just wrapped around their paws for sure. <laughs> yeah. Woodstock doesn't like rice. <laughs> doesn't like rice, apparently. No, we, we got vegetables. He likes the vegetables. So we thought we got our update. Um, <laughs> and he he likes his vegetables. He doesn't like rice mixed with his vegetables. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. I mean when you give but, them their 
it's so funny they get a you know huge bowl of food each of them every day and and you see them just running through it to get their best bits first they literally are like 10 year old children as they're rummaging through with their claws and there's bits of tomato and carrot flying all over the place so that they can get to the bit they want like they, you know they're an apple bear they they you know they'll eat every bit of apple before they eat the rest and they'll often leave the cabbage until right last and i think you know the most of the bears are like ah, cabbage no i'm not that bothered and then they'll either play with them or eat them at the end so and in, true, and in true wolfstock style the other thing we love about wolfstock is a bit of a cheeky chappy our wolfstock is but it kind of fits in with wolfstock because he likes dog kibble yes brilliant yes. brilliant yeah, we do. i mean he's i'm i've got a feeling he's going to be a tree climber when we finally get him back to chengdu he's going to be one of the naughty ones and the illegal tree climbing <laughs> <laughs> good old woofstock that's what we say so when when you so they, they sleep they've all got houses they've all got different named houses that they sleep in overnight at the sanctuary um so before they come back out into their amazing kind of like dream park sanctuary do you do enrichment treatments in there so they've got to find stuff in in the the outdoor enclosures oh, yeah it's like christmas every day it's it's so lovely because you're just hiding all their food in different places so they can't ever anticipate when they go outside what they or where it is basically it's all hidden in different places there's different foods that they will get from day to day um you know it, it some and, and their biscuits of course they're not in nice neat piles they're just scattered because they're bears they would be foraging in the wild that would be taking up 90 percent of their time you know so we try to replicate the foraging that they would be doing out in the wild and of course it, it stops dominant behavior um, and it encourages those natural foraging instincts as well. So yeah. it, you know, it's the odd, odd, odd hustle as well with other bears. Um, and, and again, it's it's amazing how they have it worked out. Um, I don't know why I keep talking about Ozzy, but he he makes me laugh as well because he he will always um, go for the lower treats first of all. So you know, all the treats are hidden. They could be really high up, and the bears have got to work to get them. And Ozzy will all go always go for the lower treats, and. and <laughs> knows he's the tallest bear that once he's got all the low ones the low hanging fruit then he can go and get the high fruit and the bears can't get it so <laughs> naughty Aussie oh, clever Aussie clever. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. How, how tall how tall are moon bears and is it true that they're one of the only bears that can walk quite a long distance on their back legs yeah they can it's called bipedally bipedal walking and they can um yeah they, and that's sadly very sadly why they're used in circuses in this oh, yeah. because uh, ben banjo if you remember guys um he we used to call him the penguin because he would walk for long long distances on his back legs ridiculous yeah. um yeah so what was the first bit of the question i forgot how, how tall when they when they stand up how tall can they be oh gosh i mean way over six feet you know tall the taller bears again like ozzy with his long legs but or or you know the other end of the spectrum bless them um the munchkins in vietnam in the little toy bear house you know they're like little guinea pigs coming out their legs are about that <laughs> so they're about two foot off the ground when they stand up so they're like me then <laughs> well, it's like or anyone else <laughs> it's a I know I know if Heidi is what she she would say it's I, I it's one of our favorite enclosures I mean we we named it deliberately the little toy bear house these little munchkins they just go running out as I say like little guinea pigs and they're just gorgeous gorgeous and they've got bags of character as well um but their tummies are almost grazing the ground you know because they're so low slung but um they're funny you'll you'll see them when you come Bless, bless them. So, what is what is a, a typical day like for a moon bear at the sanctuary? What kind of typical thing do they from the minute they wake? Do they have to be woken up? They're usually well. They're, they're, the staff will go in about eight o'clock, so they'll do the medications and thing first. So um, sometimes you get, you know, you've got some lazy ones, especially in winter, of course, when they're really sort of sluggish and dormant. Um, so they're all still snoozing in their beds. But you know, they again, they know it's medicine time, so they'll have their meds. The staff will go out and enrich the enclosures. 
Um, the night before, they had cleaned up, you know, a lot of the poo and stuff because a bear really does do that in the woods quite by quite a high degree. <laughs> And, then, and so they make sure the enclosure is clean, enrich it, put out their toys and things. Um, and then, you know, give them their meds and then let them outside. Um, and of course, they'll be, because it's all scattered, they'll be foraging for quite a long time out there in the enclosure. And you can see they're just so food obsessed. They're, they're just all running in different directions, you know, just trying to, um, you know, get what's out there. Um, and once their tummies are full, then it's either snooze time or play time you know, depending on sort of the age and the mobility of the bears. Um, and it, it's just, and that's it. I mean, for the rest of the day, you know, they come back in for more enrichment. Um, they, you know, they'll have more friends to play with, more socialising, and they get called in at five o'clock. Um, Do they just come back? Do they just come back in? Again, you know, they, they know when that, you know, when the bell, go, the whistle goes or, you know, they, they get the recall, they know that something delicious is in the den. So it's going to be something special that they don't get out in the enclosures. So they know it's worth yeah. getting on big chubby bottoms to come into the dens at night and that keeps them safe. So, yeah. But who, there was a bear, there was a bear, it seemed like I'm about to start a poem or something. There was a bear, I can't remember its name. Its name. His name? Uh, or his name. Nine years old. Uh, smart. Smart used to hind. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it'd take forever for the team to actually try and find smart for smart to come back in. So yeah, they are. Um, yeah, all around very, the very sanctuary you'd hear the our, our chinese team wonderful just calling smart and getting a crosser across <laughs> <laughs> little minks that's it. they do they go conveniently deaf like dogs you know exactly the same thing if they don't and you know there's nothing you can do if you can't get a bear in at night well that's so be it you just leave them out in the enclosure you leave a den open one den open and you and you invariably find the next morning that they've, they've migrated back inside um, because they're waiting for their breakfast, you know. So, well, let, yeah. let's have another quick video of the bears playing just to show that they actually, moon bears do actually play with each other. Hang on a second. Take it that bear should have been up that tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Be quality. laughs> you, you could watch them for hours, couldn't you? They are just so playful and they just they just the simplest thing just keeps them amused and having so much fun. It's just it just oh, I just I could just watch it for hours and hours. Maybe I can come and get a job I and know. just write down what watch and just stand there and watch them constantly. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. I love the way yeah. that they can Turn somersaults because they can, you know. They just do it like no one's watching, and they'll turn a full and complete somersault. Um, and in the early days, I mean, we don't do, you know, we try again to keep their wildness. But I, I remember cheering once with a bear called Cookie in the enclosure uh, many, many years ago um, when he did a somersault, and then he looked up and he did it again, and we cheered and he did it again, and it was like, oh my goodness, it, he's actually behaving like a clown because he's being cheered on to do it. Um, and as I say, we we don't we don't quite do that now, but um, difficult not to when you see them, as you say, yeah. getting mischief. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was some of the bears um, in in the short film um, were amputee bears as well. So 
Are they bears that may have been captured in the wild and in traps to then be moved on to the bear bar farm? Yeah, that was Harley you saw with his three back leg missing as well, which is even mm. harder for their mobility when the back leg's gone as well. But gosh, he puts on a spurt when he wants, you know, he did. I mean, he's, he's passed now, but he put on a mm. spurt when he wants to. Um, but yeah, that's that's an Ill being illegally caught in the wild. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's very sad, isn't it? That, you know, but you know, it's it's kind of when you look at you and me over the years, I've had many conversations when I've been struggling with, you know, images and and putting stuff together. Um, but when you look at that and you go, these bears went from the most horrendous conditions of hu utter human cruelty to larking about with a bit of sackcloth at the sanctuary um, and animals all all animals are very very forgiving yeah. creatures something that us humans could learn a lot from um, and it's really heartwarming so i i've got better now which is probably the wrong terminology when i get sent things or or somebody reaches out to us and says you know i think there's a problem with the cruelty case and you see the pictures and, and stuff you know can you help so i've learned to kind of adjust myself with your help over the years but how do you how do you do it how do you manage to because you see the most horrendous things to to kind of put the shutters down and deal with the matter and have carol can't it's in my head. I see a vision and that's it. I want to help and I can't help. So then I just literally, so, you know, but I'm getting better. Um, but, you know, you. Carol, I completely agree with you. I mean, I, I feel the most helpless when I watch a video about something I can't help with. And it just mm. traumatizes me so badly when someone sends in a video and says, you need to see this, you know, and, and you're not there. You're just watching this. This. Um, yeah. It's suffering so so badly I have to really psych myself up to do it but I think with the bears and I think the team would agree with me because you're there being able to do something it really empowers you to just get on with the job you know and your heart's breaking yeah. rescuing them and you're trying to sort of you know put your vibes through to these animals saying it's going to be okay and of course you can't because they just hate you they you know they, they can't tell the difference between you and a farmer that's hurt them and you know so they're lashing out in all directions and it's horribly traumatic i think for everybody but if you stay with it you just start to see um their personalities uh, just come out you know it can take it yeah. can take days you know or it can take months but you know for the bears it takes days you just see the light come on in their eyes and they just realize that um they're not going to be hurt anymore and especially true is, is when you obviously can take their pain away you know so immediately they would you know as, or as quickly as we can, if we if we know that they've got sort of horrible pathology, we're going in there and you know um, dealing with their teeth and their hearts and their eyes and their mobility and their gallbladders that you know everything else that has been affected. It's it's as long as we can take the pain away, then suddenly the the, the trust starts coming back again. And food, yeah, Always food. yeah and food. I mean, you you started this twenty one years ago. Am I right to say is it twenty one? Are we now twenty two years? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and achieved amazing to the point where we're nearly going to see the end. You, you would have rescued every bear. We're nearly at that point. Do you feel like you're actually that close? Um, uh, agreement, yeah, with the government. With yeah, the yeah. Government. 2022, it's done. Yeah, because you're building two new sanctuaries in Vietnam. Yeah, I'm hoping we might only have to build one, but we may have to go to two. We just have to see how things are next year. But as, as I said to you, Carol, this is this is survival mode this year, so we can't even afford to do that this year, you know, or break ground. Yeah. We've got to wait next year to do that, um, or wait until you know someone very very rich comes along and says they've got like 13 million US dollars in their back pocket. So yeah, oh, we win the lottery, you get it. I tell you, we we said that we win the we lottery. We had that discussion. If we, we won, won the lottery, lottery we're like, I'm like, it's animals Asia. Yeah, um, so, you know, so basically, it's never. Got, obviously, you've got other projects, which things. So let's just say we get we get every bear in. We need to put we, the money needs to keep coming in. We need to keep fundraising. So my wife has to keep doing ridiculous things for the rest of her life. 
because like we say the bears can live up to 20 i mean on the thing 19 years you know 20 30 years in the century so there's no end to it so when you're 60th what we're going to do for the unbearable challenge when you're 60. Mm -hmm. so yeah are you not showing are you showing the video you're showing all these videos are you not showing you guys on you on the plane heather no not yet <laughs> We haven't got the video through of me like that. <laughs> I got it is literally like like that, a hundred and something miles an hour. Yeah, when we get it with a pair of goggles on, we'll send it to you, Jill, so you can have a laugh. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, that, I think that comes on to one of the questions. It, yeah. it does come on to one of the well, two questions from the left card. Don't worry, they're not embarrassing. It's fine. Uh, first one we need your help with something with with both of these questions actually we need your help your expertise okay so every year we do the woofstock charity mascot race at woofstock where literally we get the three supported charities animals asia is one of them to do something really stupid which normally starts at them throwing themselves down an inflatable slide and full mascot outfit and then running uh, around the field and jumping over bales of straw to to win some cash in their paws. So, 2021, who do you think should run the charity mascot race for Animals Asia in 2021? Should it be Joe, who's done it before, Jill Maltby with a G, who did it while she was drunk with me? <laughs> she did. She did. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's uh, true. Sorrel, who did it last year and nearly cried the whole way around. Or Leanne? It's got to be Leanne, really, isn't it? If she's not done it before, <laughs> it's got to be uh, Leanne. Leanne. Leanne was the spotter last year. She did have to climb up the inflatable slide and come down, but she wasn't dressed in a mascot outfit. So Leanne, Leanne is watching. It's yeah. got to be, sorry Leanne, I'm dobbing you in. It's going to be. Uh, I'm going to make a note of that. It is Leanne. I Her will say one of the funniest was, was Jill falling down. She was wearing a Eddie thing, wasn't she? The Eddie, the Eddie costume. And just to see her going splat on the ground, I've never forgotten that. I've never laughed so hard in my life. So. Yeah, Jill, Jill Walby, we had an argument and she wanted to wear Eddie and I had to wear <laughs> Mooney um, and she put the Eddie one on. And Jill Maltby got stuck in a tractor tire, uh, <laughs> flat on her face, with everyone trying to push and pull her through. There is a picture of me in Mooney actually standing behind her doing that <laughs> as she went flying forward. But we've uh, we've had a, a we'd had a, a couple of cheeky drinks before we did the charity mascot run, so it was chaos, chaos. <laughs> Leanne has said she can't wait until next right. year. Job, Leanne. Leanne, it's nothing like it was last year. It's going to be worse. Okay, next thing for you, and you might want to think about this a little bit. What do you think my next unbearable challenge should be? Oh, gosh. Oh, Heather, I wish you'd given me a heads up on that. You can think uh, about it and come back to us. And you, don't, you haven't done the spinnaker yet, have you? No, I was due to do it with you. We made you scream from the top of it for us. You sent us a video. Harry, I love you, I think it was. I think it was. I think you should do the spinnaker. <laughs> the spinnaker. Spinnaker? Is that challenging enough? Because I can't, I don't mind abseiling. What you say is, well, it's too late now. Well, I, you could have said terrified of ice. Well, I've just strapped myself to a plane. I can't say I'm terrified of ice now. I was thinking of doing the highest tandem parachute jump without oxygen that you can do. Oh, Heather. Oh, my gosh. I mean, just, <laughs> just crazy. I don't, I don't know. Somebody just said tightrope walking on the Grand Canyon. Something makes me just not even want to goad you to doing it because I could so easily get sued. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> I'd write a disclaimer, you'd be fine. We'll have a think about it. We'll let you know what I'm going to do, and then you can do what you do every just, year and just go, What is she doing? You're amazing for doing it, for overcoming your comfort zone. You're utterly, utterly brilliant. And Carrie, you're utterly brilliant for letting her do it as well. So, between the two of you, masses and masses of thanks, honestly. I've no words for how much I love you and just 
the thanks that we need to give you guys for everything. You, you've been with us for so many years. Um, and, and it's seriously through thick and thin. You know, we've had a lot, a lot of stuff going on and, and you've just always been there. So thank you. It's because we love you. We love what you do. Love you. You're mama bear. Auntie yeah. Jill. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you are. Uh, Carol was thinking of getting me to walk the coastal path uh, as my unbearable challenge, which we thought, yeah, that could be okay down in Devon. It's quiet. I'm on the ground. Yeah. She wants me to do it in the Animals Asia mascot outfit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, do it. <laughs> Where you go? Let the book in. Oh, that's the one right. letting out of that. So I don't think everyone is just basically saying, oh, somebody's just sat on bonkers. Yeah. Uh, everyone is saying that they're doing the lottery. Um, oh, thank you. The, the, everyone is literally just saying how wonderful you are. Oh, gosh. Back at you you are wonderful. Thank it's late on here. There's so many people. And they like the, they like the bear impressions as well. <laughs> uh, um, they they loved her. Is well, is there anything else that you would like to say before we let you go and and have a beer? Again, just just thanks to everybody. You know, everyone that's watching for again for your faith and your patience and your kindness. You know, things don't always go to plan. We know that. You know, and we're still waiting for the Manning bears and. You know, we have a, a long way to go to end bear farming finally, um, you know, in, in, in other countries. But Vietnam, because of your faith and your kindness, you know, we've been able to to really do it there. And we've, we've as I say, we've got we've got the agreement for 2022. Um, you've just seen with the decision in China to end the sale of dogs for consumption and by default cats. Again, this is another founding goal of Animals Asia. And we would never, never have got there if it weren't for you guys, because I think we were able to provide the, the building blocks in that country, in China, to get sort of the public sympathy, if you like, towards dogs and cats as our very best friends. So, you know, we're, we're, I'm just so grateful and thank, thankful to all of you and, and to our teams as well who are absolutely brilliant and have stayed here for the long haul as well and really us, seen these. Us, we are to you guys. We are to you guys for doing. I mean, you know, it's just amazing. It, you, you're amazing, Jill. I'm sorry. And your team is. They, they're all inspirational. It's just, um, you know, we'll, we'll, you won't get rid of us. We're going to be here for a long time. We're not going anywhere. We're going to see it to the end. Place. I do want to say, you know, to the UK teams, you know, all our teams around the globe, it's not just the guys at the sanctuaries, although God knows they work their socks off and they do such brilliant work. They just do um, and see things that you should never, never see as well. But it's it's everybody in this foundation, this family of ours, really everybody. I, I just love it. it that Now the sheer can do attitude, you know, oh. the determination to get over what everyone's going through at the moment it is is incredible and it's just seemed like we've we've you know I, well watch this space we've got a fantastic launch in october uh, october in august 8th of august is moon bear day and we've got some real surprises for everyone this celebrity it's my birthday it is oh, and in, and incidentally yeah because i was talking to liam yesterday and incidentally so 8th of august is moon bear oh, day oh, everyone and it's when we landed eight, eight, ninety-eight. All the lucky eights and the nines in China. Can uh, you believe eight. a auspicious day? There isn't one. Um, so, Carol, happy birthday for the eights. We're going to be with you on Moon Bear Day, and we are rolling out some amazing things. So, please, everybody, tune in. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> and we're going to we're going to be linking in with you somehow because we are actually uh, planning a big virtual wolf stock on the eighth of August as well to get everyone involved and to get Animals Asia involved as well. So we've got big plans too. So it's just going to be like a massive party on the 8th, a big virtual party. Thank you well, so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, Jill, thank you. I'm going to pop you off camera. Don't go anywhere because I'm sure you've got a few choice words for us once we've not <laughs> live anymore. Thank you so much for doing this. It's been brilliant. And everyone, don't forget, I'm going to pop you off now, Jill. So have a wave goodbye. We'll speak That's to you in a minute. Lot. Bye. Bye. So don't forget, you can still donate. You can still do challenges and get sponsors from your friends and work colleagues. You can go to www.
animalsasia.org where you can buy jam and honey and fruit baskets and hammocks and pools and loads and loads of different stuff. Buy loads of honey, honey and marshmallows and jam. <laughs> they really like jam, stuff like that. Get them some fruit as well. Yeah, but and honey, and, and honey and jam. Yeah, and obviously if you donate some money, that will go towards um, medication operations. I mean, the dentist. I mean, there's so much things that you need to do. So yeah. every penny. Every penny. Can't even just a pound. You know, every penny absolutely can. Go around the office or go around to your friends and say, hey, right, put all your loose change yeah. in this tin. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be amazed on how many people just get the loose change. Just so many different ways. I know it's it's not easy. Fundraising is not easy at the moment no. because we can't be in groups or go off and do um, fairs and things. But just do it within your immediate family and friends and you'd be amazed. Don't buy that coffee. Don't buy that takeaway coffee. Put it in a pot somewhere. Yeah. Drop one coffee or whatever and put it in a pot somewhere and then you'll, you'll build that up and then you can donate it. Check out the unbearable challenge and say you don't have to do crazy stuff like I do. Uh, you, you can do, I don't know, you can not have wine for a week or, or a month, get people to sponsor you. Something that you really, really like doing that you're willing to give up or something like you're uh, willing to put yourself outside your comfort zone and raise some money for this yeah. amazing charity. It's not a challenge, but get people to sponsor you. Yeah. 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 Sitting uh, in a bath of beans. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Right. Our next interview is next Wednesday with a lady called Karen Corbett, who is an animal communicator. Again, she is really you're not going to want to miss that. Absolutely fascinating conversation with her the other day um, about horses and dogs and mice. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting. So tune in for that next Wednesday. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget, 8th of August is Moon Bear Day. So there's going to be big celebrations all around the world for that. And uh, you can donate www.animalsasia.org. And we'll catch up with you soon. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.